So um, I mentioned in one of my previous videos that I'm going to kind of start taking this blog in a slightly more science-y direction. So this is going to be the first post to that um, effect. I Inevitably what I want to talk about is, okay, you know, why? Why are certain dyes different colors? Things like that. Um, um, but for today, I need to talk about kind of what causes things to be colored on an atomic level um, before we can start talking about things like dyes and pigments and stuff. So um, today is not going to have anything to do with inks. It's going to be basically the very basis of what you need to know so that then we can talk about other things as we move on. And I apologize if there's a lot of background noise. Um, Wesley's out in the kitchen doing some dishes and the cats are running around like crazy people. Um, and we have to clean the apartment because my older brother's coming over today. And anyway, so I apologize if it's noisy in the background. I'm probably not going to refilm this if it is a little noisy. So we'll just see how it goes. Um, so first things first, I don't want anyone to be freaked out. We're not really going to be doing any math today. Um, this is just kind of a descriptive descriptive description. Um, this is just going to be kind of how do we describe these things um, without any numbers, without any math, um, stuff like that. So let's get started. And I apologize if my handwriting's awful. I have this, I don't know if you can tell, I have this sitting on the floor here and I'm trying to write while also looking at the camera to make sure that everything's in focus. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I'm not used to teaching this way. I'm used to teaching on a blackboard, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so color on an atomic level. First, what we need is we need, you know, what's an atom? I think a lot of people kind of know that, okay, everything's made of atoms, but maybe don't have an intuitive feel of, okay, what is an atom? What makes up an atom? Things like that. So, okay, so what's an atom? An atom in its very basic level, the, the most basic atom there is, is a hydrogen atom, but we don't care about that. Basically, an atom has a positive nucleus. The nucleus is the stuff in the middle. Um, it's made up of protons and neutrons. Protons are positive. Neutrons are neutral. They don't have any charge. Um, so they don't contribute to the charge of the nucleus. So I'm just going to draw a single positive thing in the middle there. And then we have electrons, which are negatively charged that circle around that proton, right? Opposites attract, so protons and protons and electrons are attracted to each other because they have opposite charges. So that's kind of what keeps this electron circling around that guy. So this guy kind of travels around the nucleus in an orbit. You can kind of think of it like planets traveling around the sun. That's how early physicists thought about it. Um, it's more complicated than that, but for now, that model works as kind of a, an intuitive mental picture. So you can think of this proton like the sun and electron like a planet. Um, okay, so we have negatively charged electrons. Um, orbiting a positive nucleus. Okay, so that is the very basic model of an atom. Obviously, as atoms get more complex, right, you get more positive things in the middle, you get more electrons. We don't want to talk about that. We want to stick with what's simple, because simple is good at this level. There's not just one orbit, right? There's, there's multiple orbits that an electron can have. Um, if you are familiar with Shrek, I know that movie is kind of getting a little bit old now, um, but an atom is like an onion. Onions have layers atoms have layers, right? So really what we have is we have our positive nucleus and we can have um, a layer that's very close to the nucleus and maybe one that's a little further away and then maybe one that's really far away out here. Right, so going back to kind of our planetary picture, right? We have our sun, maybe this is Mercury, maybe this is kind of like where the Earth is and this is, you know... Pluto, which isn't a planet anymore, but anyway. So we have different orbits that, are in our, that our electron can be in, right? Um, so let's see. So atoms are like onions. Okay. 
So, um, okay, well, how does this affect our little electron? Um, so the farther away electrons, have more energy. Um, why they do it requires some math. So at this point, you can kind of just trust me that to be further away, you have to have more energy. You have to be moving faster, which means you have more energy. So an electron that's in the center here has low energy. An electron that's out here has high energy. That's basically what we need to know. Um, okay, that's great. So electrons in the middle um, so the, the closest orbit is what we call the ground state. Um, so that would be this here. So let me make a little note for that. So the ground state is this orbit in the center here. We call it the ground state because it has the lowest energy, so it's kind of like being on the ground. Um, you know, you can't get lower energy than on the ground, but you can certainly jump up off the ground to a higher energy state. So that's why we call this the ground state. So if you hear me referring to the ground state, that just means the lowest possible energy that that electron can have, which is in the middle. Um, so, so an electron will always start in, in its ground state. Um, and if it wants to get to a higher energy state, one of these two orbits, it has to get the energy from somewhere, right? It can't just magically appear there. It has to get the energy from somewhere. Um, so, um, oops, I already used that line. So to jump to a higher level, we need energy. Okay, so we need energy. So where is that energy going to come from? So that is where we get into things being colored. Okay, so. So where does the energy come from? Good question. So one place where we can get energy is light. Yay, light. So how do we get energy from light? From photons, right? A photon is like a light particle. Um, and basically what a photon is, what a light particle is, is it's a teeny tiny little bundle of energy. So photons are little energy bundles. And we can calculate how much energy a photon has based on um, kind of what color the light is. And that's maybe something that we'll do later. Today we don't want to do any numbers, no math or anything. So for now we're just going to say photons are little energy bundles. You know, they can come in and they can give that electron some energy. Um, so, okay, so let's say we have our electron that's here. It wants to get to this state, right? It wants to jump from the ground state one level up. Um, so a photon comes in, it can give that electron a little boost of energy, and then it can get up to the next energy state, right? Not always. So electrons are very picky. Look at me anthropomorphizing electrons. Ugh, my chemistry professors would be so upset. Anyway, electrons are picky. Um, they have to, the photon has to be just the right amount of energy. Um, the photon needs just the right amount of energy. Energy, let's spell the words properly. Okay, so a, there's an energy difference between the ground state and the next level up. And we can calculate that again, that's math, but that's a thing that we can do. And it's, when you know the math, it's not that hard to calculate the energy difference between this state and this state. So we can calculate what that energy is. Um, and our photon that comes in and gives our electron energy has to have exactly that amount of energy, 
or else it won't do anything. It'll just go right through, our photon will come through, say, oh, I don't have enough energy, or I have too much energy, whiz away and go see if it can find another atom to give energy to. That's how this whole process works. So a photon that is going to give an electron energy has to either have exactly the difference between this state and this state, or this state and this state, or maybe if an electron's already up here, then a photon could come in with the exact energy from this state to this state, right? But it has to have um, certain amounts of energy. You can't just be any photon um, because it won't have the right amount of energy. It has to have an energy that's equal to um, an energy distant difference between two layers of your onion. Um, okay, so what happens if I do get a photon that has the right amount of energy? So if a photon has the right amount of energy, Um, it will give the electron a boost. Give, and again, I apologize about my awful handwriting. Um, yeah, it's hard to write and talk at the same time. Okay, it will give the electron a boost. Okay, so then our electron can move from its ground state, maybe up to this state or up to this state, whatever. It depends on the energy of the photon. Okay, so now let's say our electron is in this state, right? So let's say, let me redraw my picture. So let's say... I had my nucleus, right? I had an electron in the ground state. Let's say I had a little photon come in. The way that we draw that is we draw it as a little squiggly line with an arrow, and we give it that little Greek symbol gamma that just tells us it's a photon, right? So my photon comes in, and then that boosts my electron up to the next energy level. So. I'm going to draw a little arrow. So now my electron is over here, right? So my electron was here, photon comes in, give it some, gives it some energy, and then the electron goes there, okay? It can't stay there infinitely long, right? Electrons are kind of, you can think of this process like an energy drink, right? This photon is like a Red Bull. My, my electron drinks a Red Bull, and it gets all excited and has lots of energy for a little while, and then eventually it's going to crash, right? So um, eventually... My electron, I don't want to say my, the electron returns to the ground state. Right, so this is the crash that you feel after you drink your Red Bull, you're productive for a little while, then eventually you're going to fall back down to where you started. So, and when it falls back down, it will emit another photon. Um, right, you can't change levels for free. Either you need to absorb a photon to move up a level, and if you're going to drop down a level, you need to emit a photon. And depending on how this whole process works, these photons might be the same energy. But like, if I started, you know, in my ground state, and I got a photon that jumped me all the way up here, I might initially drop down to here and emit a photon that's a different amount of energy than the one I initially absorbed. Again, that's getting a little further into it than we need to. The point being is that an electron can absorb a photon and it can emit a photon. And this photon will have a certain color. And that's the color that we see, right? The differences between these energy levels determines the kind of photons that can be emitted. And that determines what color things are. Um, so basically, if an, elect or if an atom has a certain energy difference between two levels, it can emit a photon of a certain wavelength, and that will make it appear, say, red. A different atom might have a different energy difference, and it might emit photons of a different wavelength so that it appears green. Right? That's how things get their color. Um, another way that we can kind of make this process happen, this process you might be thinking, okay, but I absorbed a photon, I emitted a photon, nothing really changed. Yeah, it's, it, it appears to be so, it's more complex than that, but that kind of is the way that it appears. But there are other ways that we can get things to emit photons without having to put photons in. We have to still put in energy, but we don't have to put in photons. Um, other ways we can give electrons energy. Really? 
is to give electrons energy. Um, the first way is either they can just smack into other things. Um, sometimes, you know, you have a lot of atoms close together. Two atoms will kind of smack into each other. That gives the electrons of one a little boost of energy, allows it to jump up an energy level. And then when it falls back down, it emits a photon without having to absorb a photon. It got its energy from somewhere else. So that's one way we can do it. Another way we can do it is with an electric field. Um, we can run, if we have like a, a bunch of gas of atoms, we can apply an electric field using a battery. Um, and that will, again, give these electrons a little bit of energy. They can jump up a level and then fall back down and emit a photon. This is how neon lights work. Um, so colored kind of lights, that's how they work. They have different gases in them that have different energy levels and they apply an electric field, gets those guys excited, then they emit photons and depending on which atom it is, it will emit different colors of light. Um, neon, the, the gas neon, it's an actual element, that emits kind of that characteristic red kind of color. Um, you can have xenon, which is a different element that I think gives you kind of a purpley light. You can have um, argon, which I forget what color. They, basically, you have all these different gases that you can choose from, and depending on how their energy levels are arranged, they'll give you different colors of light when you apply that electric field. Um, this is also how fluorescent lights work. Um, with fluorescent lights, you have a, a mercury vapor in them, right? We know that if you break a fluorescent light, you got to leave the room because it's not good for you. They have a mercury vapor. You apply that electric field and it gets those mercury atoms excited the same way, right? We give it some energy, it boosts up an energy level, it emits some light. It actually emits light that we can't see. It emits UV light. It's like 90, 90 nanometers or 92 nanometers or something. Um, so that light is actually bad for us. But there's a coating on the inside of the fluorescent tube that absorbs the light um, and then re-emits it at a different wavelength, which is the wavelength that we see. Um, so that's another way that we can do this process. But basically, the, the important thing that, that we want to take away from this is that we have atoms that are kind of like onions. They have different energy layers. And when we move an electron up a level by however we want to give it energy, by absorbing a photon or applying an electric field, whatever, we move it up an energy level, it has to fall back down. Um, and when it falls back down, it will emit some light. And the difference between the energy levels tells us what kind of light we get out. And that's why different things appear different colors. Um, at least that's one way that different things appear different colors. Um, so we will talk about why this relates to dyes probably next time, hopefully. I'll have to see how much chemistry I kind of have to delve into to explain why dyes utilize this principle. But basically, this applies directly to dyes. Dyes are much bigger molecules, um, and they have different things going on. But at the end of the day, it's the same basic concept. It's, I have electrons, I'm going to boost them up an energy level, and then they're going to fall back down and give me some light. And that's basically why things are colored. Um, these transitions, for the most part, um, some of them appear in the visible light range, not all of them. Um, basically, as you get farther out, the energy levels get spaced closer together. So whether or not we can actually see that light um, is a whole different story. But hopefully this hasn't been too confusing. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, if, if you liked this kind of sciencey thing, let me know. If you maybe want it to be more hardcore sciencey or less sciencey, let me know. Give me ideas for things you'd like to see. Um, and yeah, I will hopefully try to get another one of these recorded next week. And we'll just maybe kind of try and shoot for one a week and we'll see how that goes. All right. And I will post um, a scan of this page. Again, I know my handwriting's awful, but if you want to take a look at the page itself, um, I will post that to my blog, which I will link below. All right. Have a good rest of your day, everyone. And I will see you later.